Usually, if there's one quote that students of economics remember, it's this from the father of modern day economics, Adam Smith that it is not from the benevolence of the butcher, the brewer, or the baker that we expect our dinner or our breakfast <laughs> this morning, but from their regard to their own interest. We address ourselves not to their humanity, but to their self-love, and never talk to them of our own necessities, but of their advantages. Now, I want you to imagine a world in which these types of market transactions grew from 1776 onwards. And we begin to believe that self-interest, primarily defined as monetary gain, is the driving motivator of everyone you meet. And this assumption becomes the core of a new discipline called economics that begins to dominate all of the social sciences and thinking in the spheres of government and teaching in what we teach our business leaders. What kind of incentives, policies, and organizations would you create with that assumption at its heart? Okay, now I want you to imagine a, a different world. One in which we believe that everyone is driven by the desire to look out for the other person and for their comrade, to work for the collective good, to give according to their ability and to receive according to their need. What kinds of assumptions, incentives, organizations would you create with the assumption at its heart that what people really care about is giving to each other? Would those incentives and organizations and companies work? Have they? And now we'll just take a third path. And that is that an assumption that we as human beings, we're sort of imperfect. We strive to love others and maybe to work for the common good, but we regularly fall short of our goals. That's what we in the field of behavioral economics use as our working assumption that we as human beings are imperfect and we can use all the help we can get. And that as we design incentives and environments, we can help people become their best selves. And actually, if you look back to Adam Smith, at the same time that he was writing Wealth of Nations, this is his second book, Theory of Moral Sentiments, at which he starts with this quote that how selfish soever a man may be, there are some principles in his nature which interest him in the fortune of others and render their happiness necessary to him. Though he derives nothing from it except for the pleasure of seeing it, of seeing that happiness. And then remarkably, he goes on to say that even the most, the greatest ruffian, the most hardened violator of society is not without this natural principle. So what is this natural principle? And can we rely on it? 